Hello and welcome to another How We Did It video, where in this one we strip and rebuild our Toyota E154F gearbox to make it shiny. This is unlike our normal videos and will consist entirely of one man's hands using various tools to dismantle and reassemble a four-wheel drive transmission. If that sounds like something you'd watch, you're in luck, as well as probably being on a register somewhere. If not, then here's your chance to bail. Still with us? You're mad, but here goes. I think the first thing we'll do is strip off the transfer box and just concentrate on the gearbox for now. This gearbox is out of a later ST205 Celica GT4 rather than the ST185 that donated a lot of its bits to Binky. The differences are minimal, a slightly different set of ratios and final drive and a different design of synchros is really all that separates them. Pull the shaft out, we need the slide hammer. So now we can get rid of the clutch fork. Look at my little plate there. Yeah? Speedo drive. This little plate. The breather. This detent. Now I can pull the gear change mechanism out. Not really worried about any of the others, but at least one of these two dowels needs to go in the engine first, so I need to get them out of the gearbox with there's still some weight in it. A dowel extractor wasn't something we had in our armoury, so we whipped one up using bits from around the workshop, including an old collet and a couple of connector nuts. A little localised heat should go some way to helping us pull it out. I was expecting more of a fight if I'm honest, so that's a good result. Yay, now we can get on with stripping the gearbox proper. End case first.
И... Technically, we're not supposed to be reusing this nut when it goes back together, but we don't have another one, so guess what? Yep, we're reusing it. Now, this is the fifth gear selector fork coming off. That gear was properly on there. They say that necessity is the mother of invention, and it was necessary to make another tool in order to be able to pull the fifth gear synchro hub off its shaft. With the gear off, that little assembly needs storing somewhere safe. as does the split needle roller bearing. The next bit to come off is the rear bearing retainer. As well as the retention plate, the big roller bearings on the shafts are held in by snap rings. These are tricky little buggers to get out. Well, well they can be. That was the bearing retainer plate that we just took off and now there's a spring clip on each of the three gear selector rods that needs to come off. Detent plug, plunger, spring and ball. The magnet on a telescopic stick is one of those very handy tools to have about. Three bolts inside the bell housing first. And then another 14 around the rest of the case. You. 
This gearbox has got its own oil pump driven off the diff down here, and then these pipes throw it around the gearbox. They've got to come off next. Followed by the reverse gear shift arm. And reverse gear. Two more gear selector shaft, detent springs, balls, and etc. Third and fourth selector. With the diff out of the way, it's time to remove the gearbox oil pump. So now we can remove this little plate. Now we've got to remove the input shaft bearing so we can change the front seal. We don't have access to Toyota Special Tool 09612-65014, but we have our own special tool and he made something that will do the same job from bits kicking around the shed.
Most definitely not. I have the special part SST 09612-65014. I told you. Just the two bare and outer races left in this casing now, which ordinarily you wouldn't have to remove unless you were changing them. But I don't want stuff to get behind them from cleaning, so we're going to pull them out. Not using Toyota Special Tool SST09308-00010. So that's the bell housing diff engine side of the thing empty, which means back to the main case where we've just got a fill and a drain plug, a couple of bearing races and some breather tubes to remove. Empty main case, so now we can move on to the transfer box assembly.
So that's the tail housing disposed of. Let's get the pinion housing off. Tap out the drive shaft seal. And pull out the drive shaft extension. And the 12 bolts that hold the two casings together. Like many things around here, this can only be solved with the correct application of a much bigger hammer. There's a screw adjuster and a lock ring down there to put the preload on the bearing. If you wanted to change the bearing, you'd have to take those out and then thrash it out. We've absolutely no need to, so we can call that casing good. The bearing race is well down in there and protected and it can't get any crap behind it. The same cannot be said of this bit of casing. So we've got to undo this lock nut, pull the shaft out the middle, and then we've got a bare casing. Unfortunately, this nut needs a special tool that we haven't got and we can't get. So. I've had to make one. But will it work? Yes. Yes, it will. Still a couple of bits to remove off this main housing, starting with more oil feed pipes. The inspection cover. plug and a blanking plug. A goobered up drain plug. Oh 
which just leaves an o-ring and a prop shaft seal on this tail housing. Shitty. They might well be grim right now, but in just a few seconds, they're going to look great. The vapor blasting has been completed and the casings look terrific, but before we can put this thing back together, the internals need a thorough inspection. What we're looking for is any damage or signs of major wear, and the first place to look is on the magnet that came out of the bottom of the gearbox. Lots of filings as you'd expect, but no major chunks. Then we can check the bearings for any roughness or excess play. Any pitting, scoring or discoloration to the main bearing rollers. And then we can check the races as well. These are probably about as worn as you'd want to reuse, but we're not going to rebuild the entire gearbox and reset it up when we're not entirely sure if we're going to be able to use the standard final drive ratio. Check we've still got nice sharp teeth on the synchro hubs. All looks pretty good. And finally, we inspect the gears to make sure we've got no bits of teeth missing. We have got some shiny spots on the pinion. And we've got the corresponding wear on the crown wheel. So it's just started to turn over at the edges, but I would imagine it's probably the same in any high power four wheel drive transmission. So I think we're good to put it back together. All right, I'll start with the transfer box and reassembly thereof, starting with the bearing shim and bearing race. rubber cushion for the oil transfer tube followed by the tube itself need to put the two outer bearing races back in the pinion assembly And what you're supposed to do here is use a new nut, tighten down the preload and measure it with a spring tension gauge off this corner here. The problem is I made this tool and I have no idea what this dimension is supposed to be, so it would be meaningless. So I think the only thing we can do is use the old nut, put it to where it was, lock tight it and restake it and hope we're good. Feels about right. A little bit of rubber grease to help the o-ring go in.
couple of shims. Right, now we can seal up the two halves. There's 12 M10 fine bolts that hold the two halves of the transfer case together. That includes these two, they're going to hold the bracket to hold our downpipe. If you were rebuilding this transmission, especially the transfer box, you'd measure the backlash through this little hole here. We haven't changed anything, so it should all have gone back together as it was. It certainly feels about right, but it's those shims there on the back housing and that little adjuster knot there that adjust it all. So that means we can install the front diff right hand drive shaft carrier bearing thingy.
So that's the transfer case all back together and looking shiny. Okay, on to rebuilding the gearbox and we'll start by putting a new input shaft oil seal in and then carry on with reinstalling all of the bearing outer races. On most gearboxes, the input shaft oil seal is on the clutch side of the bell housing, so if it starts to weep and your clutch starts slipping, it's not the end of the world to change. But Toyota, in their infinite wisdom, decided to put it on the inside of the case, so a complete gearbox removal and disassembly is necessary to change it. There's one to do in the other side casing while we're at it. Shim first. Bearing out a race. There's a new dry shaft oil seal to go in here too, but not before this little transmission oil baffle. Okay, back to the main event where we can install this little receiver plate, they call it. The oil pump. Not forgetting to make sure this little gasket is still there. And the magnet. Followed by the diff. And then the oil pump drive. The egg put shaft assembly.
and the input shaft assembly. Taking care not to ruin that new seal. Okay, let's see if we can get these in the right order. Shift fork. Shift rod. Shift fork. Shift rod. Reverse interlock. And the third selector rod. Detent ball, and spring, and caps. The reverse idler and shaft. And this little mark on the top has to point at this hole because the bolt that holds it in place comes through the main casing into there. The reverse shift pivot. Oil feed line. Well, I think we're done with the bows and diff casing, so now we need to jump over to the main case to install a couple of bits. First is the reverse restrictor pin. Followed by its locating pin. And a bun. And I think there's just these two, I don't know, breathers, oil trays to fit, and then we can splooge it up and put it together.
For the avoidance of any doubt, this is what Nick meant by splooge it up. Seventeen of the buggers. Including the three on the inside of the bell housing. The reverse idler shaft bolt that I spoke about, this has got an alley crosh washer on it because it goes through the casing. The last gear selector detent spring and ball. Gear change rod snap rings, take one. Woohoo! Input shaft rear bearing, out of race. Tap tap. Uh, shim. Spring clip retainer for the bearing. Uh, bearing retainer plate. Alright, now we can put fifth gear on, starting with the split cageless needle roller bearing, so this can't go disastrously wrong. Fifth gear synchro hub, without the aid of a special tool. Fifth driven gear.
<sighs> fifth gear synchro hub sleeve and shift fork. Strong locked out again because we haven't got a new nut. Time for the gear selector assembly, and this is where the only gasket on the entire transmission goes, which of course we haven't got, so more goop. Gearbox drain plug. And fill plug. Uh, gearbox cooler outlet fittings. Okay, so there's just reverse light sensor, gear selector lock bolt, and the gearbox case breather. Alright, I think we're ready to attach the transfer box, which starts with the innermost of the four shafts. Some more goo. So now what we're going to do is get the transfer box on there, which is not quite as easy as it sounds, because as well as taking all the weight of that, I've got to line up all of these four shafts at the same time before it'll go on. Hmm. It really is a great feeling when it slides together first time, I would imagine. This took a couple of goes, but it's home now and bolted up tight. A couple of cleaned up rubber bits next. First, a sort of air duct thing. Followed by the clutch fork gator. After smearing some grease on the pivot ball, the clutch fork gets installed.
And I think the last piece for now, a bit of an embellishment. I love gold. So there you have it, our Toyota E154F transmission stripped, cleaned, vapor blasted, inspected and then rebuilt. If you made it this far, well done and thanks for watching how we did it.